welcome. Today we have Sean Fagan with Fagan Studios with us to tell us about his career. Welcome, Sean. How are you today? Hi, nice, Jenna. Good, good. Thanks. Glad to be here. <laughs> Thank you. Can you tell us what it is you do at your job and how you got there? Yeah. Um, along with my wife, Michelle, uh, we both studied photojournalism in college at South Dakota State University. And uh, through working with through newspapers as photojournalists and telling stories with photography, um, we opened up our own photography studio here in Rochester about 17 years ago now. Yeah, just over 17 years ago now. And um, out of our studio, we used to shoot a lot of weddings. Um, we shot nearly a thousand in our career. Um, we don't shoot weddings anymore, really, every once in a while. Uh, we've really turned the focus of our um, workload into senior portraits, families, and we do a lot of commercial work anymore as well. Um, with, a take, uh, with Instagram and Facebook being uh, very popular platforms amongst other social medias, um, it's been uh, content creation for commercial uh, com companies has become very important. Um, so we're able, able to do that again through our perspective, our lens of photography um, to help communicate other brands' stories to their uh, potential client base. So. In this studio, what happens in the studio or what all entails the studio? Yeah, so our, uh, our photography studio is a, um, it's an old, it's one of the oldest buildings in Rochester, actually. It's down here on Broadway and uh, it's a two story brick building. And as always our dream ever since my wife and I were in college uh, to have an old brick building with wood floors. Um, so 13 years ago, we walked in the front door with our broker my wife started crying and it's like, this is it. This is that dream. Um, so it was awesome to pull that off. Uh, so for 13 years, we've been running our photography business out of the studio. Um, the three years before that, we were actually running it out of our basement in the Northwest corner of town where we still live um, in our uh, split level home up there. And then for the previous nine months from the day we moved to Rochester for nine months, we actually ran it out of my in-laws basement is where we started our business in Rochester. Um, did a lot of on location things and, uh, we're very blessed to have the support of her parents and uh, very blessed that our business took off. We hit our three-year goals in a matter of nine months. We purchased our house and converted the bottom floor into our studio. And then um, the stars aligned and we were able to purchase this building 13 years ago. Uh, we do shoots here. Uh, we're a full service studio. Um, so we have a great team that does the production side of things with uh, toning, retouching, designing of our books and all of our products. Um, we uh, have clients come back in here for ordering sessions. They have an awesome experience. They sit down on this uh, couch and have it on the big screen. They see their portraits and we help serve them by selecting art. We're not just here to take pictures. We want to create art with what we do. Um, we're very art forward, obviously, um, but we're not going to give people homework. We're not going to give you a flash drive and you have to go print it yourself. We're going to take care of you every step along the way. So um, we have a team here at the studio that does that. And um, that's what happens in the studio. We also, um, let's see, about probably two years into owning the building, yeah, three years maybe, um, people would come in downstairs and they look past our wedding portraits, look past our printed portraits on the walls and they see this gorgeous building, gorgeous space downstairs. And, and they'd always see the space and they'd overlook the photography. We always kind of joked about that. Um, but we're like, you know what? We're never here. We're, we're very strict with our hours. We're very much 8.30 to 5.30 ish. Um, we don't work on the weekends. Um, our family comes first and that's something that's been great as being an entrepreneur, as being a small business owner that we set our hours. Um, sure, there's opportunity for us to make more money if we work more hours over the weekends and stuff, but our priority is our family. So we're very fortunate that we're able to do that with our business. Um, I see other people just running ragged and it's like, you, you, you've got to have that balance in a way. So um, we're never here on the weekends. We're never here in the evenings. And that's when we're like, well, we can activate this space more for our community and more for our uh, revenue streams um, by hosting sm uh, small private events. So we started renting out the first floor of our building. We call it Studio 324. Our address is 324 South Broadway. Um, and uh, we have people use it for wedding receptions and ceremonies. Mayo Clinic uses it for different dinners. Um, office parties, Christmas parties, um, birthday parties. I think we have an engagement coming up this Sunday or this Saturday. So uh, you guys are the first to know that. I don't think the bride even knows or the woman knows that she's going to be engaged to in the studio. So, uh, but yeah, we've activated the space um, more for the community. But again, as a small business owner, it's okay. How do we 
make ends meet? What do we do? What needs are there and how can we help them? Wow, very creative. And I guess that leads me to the next question is, as you have become an entrepreneur and you, you did a nice job describing the path it took you, what other skills have been necessary to be able to be as successful as you are as an entrepreneur? Yeah, and I think a lot of people see it, you know, we run a photography business and a lot of people love photography. They, love, they want to get involved in photography and it is a blast. It is literally one of the coolest careers. Um, back before we owned our studio, I worked for a newspaper in Utah and I shot Utah jazz games. So I photographed NBA games. I was the guy on, this, on the court with the players falling right next to me. It's, it's a, there's a lot of amazing things that you can do with photography. Um, but when we wanted to launch a photography business, that business component became a very important part of it. Um, I went to school for photojournalism. Um, I took one entrepreneurship class. Um, I didn't take accounting or anything like that. So I, we spent a lot of time reading. We did a lot of research. We did, we're involved with a lot of forums online and we learned a lot that way. Um, Jamie, I forgot where I was going with that. What was the question again? See, that's what happens with me. My mind goes. <laughs> Skills that would be needed. Uh, yeah. um, you have innovation and creativity for sure, but what other skills? Yeah. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say about the photography side of things is that the photography business, that's where I was going with that, is that there are a lot of phenomenal photographers out there, but they don't have that business component. Um, or maybe you have that business component, you don't have the photography part. So we try and find that sweet spot of having both and have them cross and intersect well. Um, but I, I think there's a lot of natural skills that, you know, God given, just that my wife and I, we just love people. We love meeting new people, we love hosting people. Um, we host dinners at our house all the time, um, but in that same way, we love having people into our building. Um, we love meeting and talking, and I like to have, get an understanding of who my subject is and how can I tell their story? Who, how can I reflect who they are in the portrait work? Um, that means the subject has to give me a little bit so I can work off of. Um, but I think that's a big part of it too, is that people, our largest, demographic of client that's coming to us are repeat clients. They love the experience of coming here. So I think that's a big piece of it. Again, we're good photographers. There's a lot of good photographers out there. Um, we're good business people. There's a lot of good business people out there. But I think it's that social, that just that human aspect of things. And we're very much about the service. I love going to a great restaurant. I love when they serve my meal. I love when they serve my drink. I love going to a nice uh, hotel. Um, I love being served and I want to do that for other people too. I want people to feel um, unique. I want them to feel special. I want them to feel taken care of when they come in here. And I think that goes back to us being a full service studio. It's like, we're just not going to meet you at the park, photograph you and here's your flash drive, have fun with it. It's like, no, no, we want to create art that reflects who you are for your family for generations kind of thing. Um, yeah, as far as those other skill sets, I mean, there's, there's literally thousands of them. We always joke about it. We all wear a thousand hats in this business. We're a small boutique studio. We don't have the budgets to hire, you know, a separate IT person or HR or anything like that. So if the printer goes down, well, it's, it's one of us that has to go fix the printer kind of thing. Um, light bulbs need to be changed. Well, it's us that's up on top on the ladder changing light bulbs. It's not just the fun parts of like, oh, I'm just out behind the camera all the time. And a small shop is lots of things to do. But to this day, there's not been two days alike kind of thing. I, I love that personally. In your description, I hear a lot of passion in what you do. Could you tell me why you keep doing it? What motivates you to come there every day and keep serving people? You nailed it right there, Jamie. I literally had that yesterday morning. And I'm waking up, had a beautiful weekend, uh, super chill weekend. And like Monday's coming, but I thankfully have been very uh, blessed that there's, in the 17 years I've been doing this, there's not a single day, literally not a single day where I'm like, shoot, I have to go to work. And that's why I always encourage people that I meet to um, do what you love, that way you love what you do kind of thing. And I've been fortunate to be able to pull that off. Um, and uh, we worked hard with that. But um, um, Jamie, what was it again? The passion piece. Oh, uh, the serve people. Like, you know, why do we keep coming back in kind of thing? And that's just it. It's to serve people. You know, it goes back to us loving to meet people, love having people. We love to host people in our home for dinner. We love to host them here to serve them through our business. And that's just it. It's literally, I, I woke up yesterday and like, who do I get to serve today? How do I help solve somebody else's problem? Again, on the commercial photography side of things. How do I tell their story to better their business kind of thing? Um, I love that aspect. 
um, kind of a neat story along those lines is with uh, the beginning of COVID happening. Um, our neighbors are Mango Thai. They run a fantastic Thai restaurant just around the corner from us. And uh, they were, of course, shut down for a while. We're get, they were given the option to open up, um, but only for to-go orders. Um, so we were talking to them. We crossed paths all the time in the alleyway back here. And we're uh, uh, they're great neighbors. And um, we talked to them, figured out their hours. And my wife and I were like, hey, let's grab uh, dinner from there tonight. We'll take it home. So I call them up. No answer. And I was like, oh, that's weird. I appreciate it. Sure, they said they're open. So we try again, no answer. I look out my back door and I see that the car is parked there. So I'm like, you know, I'll go walk over, I'll go talk to them. So I go in there and they told me that, yes, they're open. Um, they have one phone line. And if it's, they're on it, they're, some, they're serving a different customer. Um, they, it doesn't ring busy, it doesn't go to a voicemail. So I'm like, well, you guys are losing money here. You guys are losing customers. So I was like, you know what? I, I do a little bit of uh, website design type things. And I'm pretty sure I could pull off an online shopping cart for you. Is that okay if we do that? I can work on that for you. And they're like, yes, that sounds great. And at the same time, um, there's a Keep It Local grant that came through with our city and uh, DMC. And it was just a phenomenal shot in the arm for us. So I was getting ready to kind of help them out at any rate, but then we were able to do it through this grant. So we got paid for our time. They benefited from an online shopping cart. And we just saw their sales skyrocket over the next several weeks. Um, and again, that, so that was something, again, that comes from who we are here. We want to serve people. And I had that opportunity to do it on that commercial side of things with helping their business succeed. And I mean, that just literally feels good, especially in, during, after six weeks of lockdown type idea. It felt good to be doing something as compared to just being stuck at home or I came down here all the time. But um, I, that's what motivates me is that idea to serve people, how to help people. Um, even granted, that's a very specific idea of um, how to do it. I have another meeting here uh, this morning with another uh, uh, client that I'm going to create an online shopping cart for them. Uh, we're going to create a process for how to get their products up online better. Um, and again, it's the, the idea that they've got issues and I have the little bit of knowledge I have, I can probably help them out and help their business succeed and grow. Um, and that excites me phenomenally kind of thing. So. And even on the portrait side of things, then it's the idea to serve them. I want people to feel incredible coming in here. Um, we all deal with crap, right? We all got crap going on. Um, but when you're in here kind of thing, you're the one person I'm caring about at that time kind of thing. And I want people to feel that. I want people to feel that you were created, you were, you were awesome. And uh, we've all got stuff we're dealing with, but we've got this kind of thing. So yeah, we love to just, Keep continue to serve and continue to solve problems and help. So that's very cool that you can help your neighbor in, in such a hard time. Thank you yeah, for sharing. That was name. As we come to a close, um, if there are high school students watching this, which some will be, and they'll be reaching out to you further after that, uh, what classes should they take in high school if they're interested in photography and or creating their own business and doing that? Sure. Um, well, obviously photography classes, that's kind of an easy one there. Um, I started when I was a sophomore in high school. I saw the very first photograph hanging up in my studio I ever took. And I took it with a shoebox and processed it in a black and white dark room, just like you see in the old the movies, uh, with the red lights and the, the chemicals and the, everything like that. So uh, if you're ever downtown, stop in, I'll show you the very first one image I ever took in my entire life. Um, but so yeah, photography, obviously, if you're interested in the photography side of things. And there, it's unreal, again, how many different, there's photojournalism, there's portrait photography, there's um, fashion photography. The, the Mayo Clinic alone, I think they have nearly a dozen photographers on staff that photograph surgeries, they're surgical photographers. Um, the list goes on and on and on. So there's lots of different ways to use photography in your life uh, as a career. Um, but then on the other side, as far as the entrepreneur side, the business side of things, I think any opportunity you have to take something that's related to business management, entrepreneurship, um, accounting would be a really would be a great one. That's something I'm still not good at. Thankfully, I hire other people, accountants, to take care of that for me. Uh, but it'd be great to have that knowledge base there. Um, so I think anything along those manners. Um, I remember my college, I had friends that went through um, hotel and restaurant management. Taking some of those classes would have been phenomenal because yeah, that comes from the, the uh, service side of things, I think. Um, and then uh, there's numbers involved with that as well. So anything like that would be very great to take um, early on. We're a small business, um, you know, on the graphic design side of things, if you know how to communicate visually to people, um, and if you have, even if you're not gonna go into photography itself, 
but maybe you're going to go into marketing, um, communications, whatever, what business doesn't need somebody to help them with social media channels, um, with creating content for those things, with designing even just a PowerPoint slide deck or something like that. Um, can we th have those communicate in a way that's benefiting the presenter? Um, so taking graphic design type classes. Um, if you know a little bit about a computer, uh, back, I mean, this would have been 20 years ago, my wife and I programmed our first websites, or, um, coded our first websites. Um, through that, I know just enough anymore that I can squeak by with some other things in mind where I don't have to hire every little thing out like that. So I think there's lots of those little one-off type classes that are just great to have that knowledge base. And beyond high school classes, um, you know, I try and tell my high school sons, I have two high, sons in high school right now, um, that you can invest, you know, another five hours today playing Fortnite, or you can invest some time on YouTube. You can learn anything you want on YouTube kind of thing. If you want to learn how to code a website, it's on there. So um, you have to be self-motivated in order to pull off, you know, running your own business. And, uh, you know, I mentioned back in the day as the books and the forums and everything like that, it was a lot of self-learning, a lot of, uh, you know, kind of common sense with being on the street and just living it and doing it and activating it, putting it to use, putting it to life. Perfect. If a student wanted to follow up with you individually and ask further questions, uh, would there be a method such as email or phone that they could reach out to you? Yeah, email would be the best for sure. Uh, my email address is sean at faganstudios.com. Uh, feel free to share that wherever you need to. That's S-H-A-W-N at faganstudios with an S on the end dot com. You can find it up on the website there too. But uh, yeah, just reach out to the studio. We're always happy to have job shadows come in. Um, spend some time here and I'm an open book. So I'll share our story, what we've done, um, what we hope to do, um, how we do it, what we do. So yeah, always uh, happy. I had my start doing that too. I had a job shadow when I was a teenager in high school and it really opened up my eyes to what a career in photography could look like. So most definitely please reach out. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Sean. For sure. My pleasure.